So after Elaine Cottam, John Nail Singh has been the second most requested by a long margin of uh, witnesses to review and analyse. So we're going to jump into John Nail Singh's testimony with today 92 of the inquiry towards the end of 2023. And he is one of the witnesses who gets a self-incrimination warning similar to Graham Ward. He also wants to make some corrections to his statement, but he wants to keep jumping in and across Jason Beer, which isn't making him too happy. Let's jump into the inquiry. So can I call John L. Singh, please? Yes. Yes. That's okay. I swear by Sunda Gupta. I swear by Sunda Gupta that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. Please do take a seat, Mr. Singh. Thank you very much. Before Mr. Uh, Beer asks you any questions, uh, Mr. Singh, I, I, I think it appropriate to address you as follows. Under our law, a witness at a public inquiry has the right to decline to answer a question put to him by counsel to the inquiry, by any recognized legal representative, or by me, if there is a risk that the answer to that question would incriminate the witness. This legal principle is known in shorthand form as the privilege against self-incrimination. Mr. Singh, fairness demands that I remind you of that principle before you give your evidence. If at any stage you wish to rely on the privilege, it is for you to make that clear to me in respect of any question put to you, i.e. you must tell me that you wish to rely upon the privilege against self-incrimination. If, therefore, any questions are put to you by any of the lawyers who ask you questions, or by me, which you do not wish to answer on the ground that to answer such questions might incriminate you, you must tell me immediately after any such question is put. At that point, I will consider your objection and thereafter rule upon whether your objection should be upheld. I understand from Mr. Beer that you are represented here today by a solicitor. No doubt, if the issue relating to self-incrimination arises, they, the solicitor will assist you. And if at any stage during the questioning, you wish to consult your lawyer about the privilege against self-incrimination, you must tell me so that I can consider whether that is appropriate. Do you understand all that? I do, I do sir. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over so it's not unheard of for a witness to get the self-incrimination warning, which is in the fact, you know, a common legal right among all witnesses. But it's certainly not commonplace either. We saw it with Graham Ward's testimony and we're now seeing it with Jarnail Singh's testimony. But they must clearly think that he's got some interesting things to divulge here, things that could potentially drift into self-incrimination for them to deliver that warning prior to asking him any questions. Over to you, Mr. Beer. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Jason Beer, and I ask questions on behalf of the inquiry. Can you give us your full name, please? John L. Singh. And thank you very much for coming to give evidence to the inquiry uh, today and tomorrow, and for previously providing a witness statement to us. You should have a copy of that witness statement. I've got it here. Yes. In front of you. Thank you. It's 89 pages in length, excluding the indexes to the exhibits. And it's so that is really substantial in terms of the witness statements that we've seen. John Elsing was a post office lawyer, so you would expect that he's familiar with delivering witness statements. So there'll certainly be a lot for the inquiry to analyse there. Dated the 6th of October. For the transcript, the URN is WITN 0475 Yes. If you turn to the 89th page, please. Yes. Is that your signature? Uh, that is my signature, but I think we discussed before. I need to um, amend a few paragraphs. Yes, before I was um, sorry, ask you uh, whether 
the contents are true to the best of your knowledge and belief. I think there are a series of corrections that you would like to make. Yes, please. Can we go to page 19, please, and paragraph 51, if that can be brought up on the screen, please. Uh, paragraph 51. Yes. Um, the sentence which reads, when the matter was committed to the Crown Court, once instructed, counsel were asked to draft the indictment and in doing so look at the summons and also provide advice on evidence. Essentially, they would revisit, revisit and review the whole case. Yes. Uh, what's the correction you would like uh, to make to that? Just to add, paragraph, just to clarify, I think, for you and anybody um, who wants to have a look at this uh, statement, is that, uh, if we can add, uh, after counsel has been instructed, the uh, case papers are, are passed on or passed, passed on to the legal executives to manage and uh, progress the case in the Crown Court. That's all. Thank you. Um... So we've got an addition there, which is normally removal. So we've got an addition there just to clarify the significance of that may become clear, but I think he's essentially trying to clarify, I did hand this off, so it's not just down to me, whatever that bit is about. Can we turn to page 25, please? In paragraph 70, uh, this reads, um, a document references a meeting which I attended with Gareth Jenkins, Warwick Tatford and John Longman in October 2010. I do not recall this meeting or ever discussing Gareth Jenkins' witness statement with him. As far as I recall, I have very, very limited involvement with Mr Jenkins. I cannot recall any discussions where he was informed of his duties to the court, although I would have assumed counsel would have informed, informed him of the same. Which is the correction or clarification that the, you would like to only, make? The only word there is very limited. I think that can go, that can be I had more involvement with Gareth, Mr Jenkins. Um, Sorry, so the sentence which says, as far as limited. I recall, I had very limited involvement with I Mr Jenkins. Hold, yeah, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mr Singh, if you let me ask the question first, sorry, sorry. and then when I finish speaking, if you start speaking. Yeah, let me look. So, so the sentence which says, as far as I recall, I had very limited involvement with Mr Jenkins. What is the amendment that you would like Hello. to make? Hold on. Sorry, what? I'll be looking at you. Sorry, yeah. I'll what is the amendment that you would like to make to that? Uh, that should read, as, as far as I recall, I had more or greater, greater involvement with Mr Jenkins. So the opposite to what it says? Yeah. Is that right? So there's like some attempts there, at least in the witness statement, to kind of distance himself from Gareth Jenkins, which will possibly become clearer later on, presumably after receiving and reviewing the bundle of evidence from the inquiry. He's now to say that actually he can't distance himself as much and actually said he's got greater involvement with Mr Jenkins, like Jason Beer Casey said there, the exact opposite. Right. Yep. Uh, the third correction, please. Um, page 26, paragraph 76, which is at the foot of the page. It reads, my understanding is that when a sub-postmaster was found guilty, repayment directions were given by the court. Council would forward these to the criminal law team, who'd make sure they were complied with by the defence. If enforcement proceedings were needed because the directions were not complied with, the investigation and security team would approach us and we would make the appropriate application to the court. To clarify, this was before the separation of the businesses. When the businesses separated, enforcement proceedings were dealt with by Cartwright King. What's the correctional clarification you'd like to make there? Um, if you just give me a second. Yeah, um, where it says council would forward these to CLT, uh, if, you, if we delete, uh, if we add there something to the effect of, and these were copied on to the uh, investigation security team. Thank you. And I think if you delete, um, uh, so it should read, my understanding is that when suppose we found guilty, repayment directions were given by the court, council would forward these to CLT, who would in turn copy this to the uh, secu as investigation security team, and if we can then, uh, who would who would make sure they were complied with by the defence? If enforcement issues were needed because the direction was not complied, security would approach, and I think that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So it was the enforcement team who would make sure they were complied yes. with by the defence, not the criminal law team. Yes. Is yes. that the the effect of the amendment you want that, to make? Yes. 
So it should read, Council would forward these to the criminal law team and the enforcement team, <coughs> the latter of whom would make sure they were complied with by the defence. Yes. Thank you. And then lastly, page 67, uh, paragraph 200, towards the bottom of the page. Oh. It, it reads, I had limited contact with Mr Jenkins, and I'm not in a position to comment on any views that he expressed in relation to the disclosure being sought by the defence and the relevance of the material sought to the case. His main point of contact was John Longman. What's the correct ah, clarification? Uh, yeah, I think it, that, hold, that's hold on. where... Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Sorry, I should be looking at you. What's Sorry. the... Uh, correction or clarification that you would like to make to that, please? Uh, I think that should be, I had more contact with the Mr Jenkins. So again, it's re-emphasising that I actually had a closer relationship, professional relationship with Mr Jenkins, Mr Gareth Jenkins, than he was trying to suggest in his original statement, which will likely become clear, I'm presuming, when he's asked about Gareth Jenkins' rather famous statement himself so it should read i had more contact with mr jenkins i had yeah something and am or am not in a position to comment uh hang on. I, I think that's uh, yeah i think uh, that, that'd be fine i think be that, sh that should stay so it's yeah. i had more contact with yeah, mr yeah. jenkins yeah. okay with those um four corrections brought into account are the contents of that witness statement true to the best of your knowledge and belief yes yes it is Thank you. A copy of that witness statement is going to be uploaded to the inquiry's website. And I'm not going to ask you about every part of it. Uh, do you understand? Yes, yes. But that can come down, thank you. And the reason, obviously, they asked that, as we've said before, is that when they questioned on the witness statement, they don't want them backtracking, saying it wasn't my statement, it wasn't my signature. So now that he's made those corrections, he's saying this is 100% stuff you can rely on that I have said now. It's true to the best of my knowledge and belief.